Okay, praise the Lord, everybody. Howdy, howdy, howdy. I'm so glad that Jamie showed up, otherwise this would have been like stag night for me. <laughs> Almost. Wednesday night service. Uh, we need that feminine correction here. So, praise the Lord, everybody. Anybody have a prayer request tonight? Mm. Yes, Peter. Uh, I'd let somebody else go first, but if they want, no, I'll go. Um, so, a couple things. Uh, one of my co-workers, the one that I've had the privilege to encourage and share the gospel with, um, she, her mom's going in for the cancer center again tomorrow. They're going to insert a feeding tube. She's um, just concerned about that situation, so we just need additional prayer. She's um, she's going in for surgery for her cancer on Monday. So there's that. Um, situation at work um, could be better. Financial situation could be a lot better. Um, just needing wisdom, and right right now I could use um, some money too. Praise the Lord. Just believe God for it. Amen. Nothing's impossible. Mike. Uh, Cindy's on her way back from Iowa Hospital. She had some uh, oral surgery done today, and uh, everything seems to be going good. Uh, but just want her total restoration to come forth and, and go from there. Message from Tim and Leah just before uh, I left the house to come to church, and uh, they're not going to be able to be here tonight. But he did request a prayer for the family. I remember that as well. Anyone else? James. Um, any farther on scan? I've got a friend from school, and I guess your mother isn't very well. I want to make sure I pray for them and the anxiety of words and the way get through this. Well, another week of, before my birthday, I have the dentist thing, and I hope that that goes okay, the tooth thing. I think it will. I'm not worried over it, but I still want God's grace to follow me and to follow me more at work and a situation at home where Joe gets bitter on stuff and get me to keep um, lifting him up rather than worrying about that. And I, can't, I can't deal with the negative, but I tell people at work that I cannot deal with this put down stuff. I said, are you going to say stuff about me? And I'm going to say stuff about my manager. And just don't. Yes. Well, we will definitely pray. But just remember, James, you're in good company if they're talking about you. Mm -hmm. right. So, it's just the nature of the beast, you know. It's, it's too bad, but that's, that's the way it is. And, uh, you know, they talked about Jesus everywhere he went. And uh, a lot of that cruelty and just ignorance is out there, but we just have to rise above it and praise the Lord anyhow. Hallelujah. Amen. Anybody Amen. else? All right. Praise the Lord. Let's stand to the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. <laughs> Father, you have heard every request. You knew them all before we got here, but you asked us to share them with you, and we have done that. We've cast our care upon you yes, because Lord. we know that you care for us. Yes, Lord. Father, every request that was made here is a part of your will. We see yes, it in your, in your word all the time. And you have said, if we pray according to your will, we yes, know that Lord. you hear us. And if you hear us, we have our petition. So, Father, we're not pleading and begging. We're celebrating right now the breakthrough in each of these situations for healing, for peace and wholeness to come in the family's uh, confidence in the Lord and his might and his power and his purpose for their lives. We pray for James to have peace on the job and in his home, that uh, you would just drive out those spirits of strife and, yes, uh, and confusion yes, and give him peace, your peace that passes all understanding. Mm -hmm. For Peter and Jamie, Lord, we just believe for financial yes, increase, yes, Lord, for breakthrough, for supernatural outpouring of financial increase in Jesus' name. Lord, you said you told us that you would supply our need according to your riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. There is no lack for those who believe. And so we just speak that into their situation, into their life. We release our faith, amen, for that right now. Lord, Cindy, traveling back from Iowa City, we just pray that you would be with her, protect her, bring her home safely, and just finish the ongoing healing and ministry that's going on in her life and has been for some time. And Lord, we just believe we're going to see it all come to fruition and see the manifestation of it for your glory and for your people's well-being. 
And we thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. We praise you tonight, Lord. We're grateful. We praise you for the testimonies that will come as a result of our confidence in you. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Any announcements? Oh, oh, that's me. Cricket me. Praise the Lord. Turn off the phones. Do it. <laughs> mm. Hallelujah. Easter day, next week. Praise the Lord. Amen. Eastern Gate House of Prayer, next, this coming Friday, a week from this Friday. A week from this Friday. A week from this coming Friday. Be here. Yes, or, man, or not. Or be condemned. Exactly. <laughs> Come and be part of it. Amen. So, Bring so somebody around. Tell going. everybody about it. Get them out here. Amen. Let's see breakthrough. Let's see some uh, some kingdoms come down and some kingdoms be established. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I just have one announcement. I didn't get a chance to talk to Mike about this, but uh, Sally had asked me to mention it to you so we could get a, a, an announcement up on the board. I think we're going to try to have a uh, kind of a fall cleanup and church-wide stuff, uh, the 21st, I believe is what she said, so. Amen. Um, she'll validate that, verify it, or something on Sunday, but that's my best understanding up to this point, so kind of, if you can, be available for that, it'd be great, and we'll just clean up the inside and the outside a little bit, and get things ready before the cold weather comes. Amen. Kind of get a jump start on next spring, maybe. Praise the Lord. Anybody, anything else? We're good. Praise the Lord, and let's do that very thing. Let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, and we'll do an offering, too. If, if my good friend, Ron, will take up the offering. Praise the Lord. He is the man that holds the bag. I don't know about it. He's left holding the bag. He could be left holding the bag. We don't want that to happen, but we appreciate Ron. James is missing these. He's yeah, all right and left. He's, yeah. he's storing them up. I think he's saving them for a, a real any young one after the exam. Just release it all on us. Father, well, it's nice to come into your presence, whether corporately or individually, that we can have peace, freedom, understanding, discernment, favor. Yes, you give us all things that the life of God. We thank you that you're faithful in your promises. Thank you for your presence. Thank you that you will minister unto us and you will give us the things that we need for this time and place. We just ask you to bless this offering. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Appreciate Roberto and covered for me Sunday. Yes, I forgot to say anything about that, but he did do a good job. Amen. Praise God. excited about it too. Whew. Praise the Lord. And it's good service. It's good worship. It was. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you all, worship team, for standing with them.
God right now. Sing like tragedy after tragedy. I know it's been a long time, and it's been going on for years, but First Chronicles 7, 14. If my people are called on my name, Thank you. 
I heard this uh, second hand here a while back, just a few days ago. Someone had said that uh, they were uh, they were going to preach. They were going to preach, and uh, but they were going to preach the Bible just the way it's written. <laughs> now uh, I'm not easily offended, although I'm not totally blind to the situation. <laughs> and uh, I was here. <laughs> yes, someone from here, or was from here. Uh, well, I guess from here, yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, so I get it. I, I understand so, what the gentleman was saying. Is that the Hebrew or the Greek? The Hebrew? <laughs> That's what I'm wondering myself. <laughs> Amen. Just as it is. Amen. No, no additions. No deletions. I don't try to add anything, I just try to open up what's already there, and uh, Amen. sometimes that confuses some people who just want it better for better. Although, the scripture does say that uh, the spirit gives life and the letter kills. So I think it would probably be a good idea for all of us to try to find what the spirit is saying compared to the church, and not just what the letter of the law is. Praise the Lord. But, Amen. With that in mind, that's what I want to talk about tonight because it got stuck in my craw and I'm just Really, it isn't a big deal. It isn't like the first time I've ever heard anything like that. But I just think it's a misunderstanding for people. And I don't mean that to try to defend myself. I'm just saying that's, in my opinion, that's just the way it is. So, And I want to talk about that a little bit tonight so you can understand where I'm coming from. Amen. So let's do that by beginning at 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And we'll read verses 1 through 3, Mike. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3, verses 1 through 3. You read there. And, yeah. well, I'll be, I'm going to be as brief as I possibly can tonight, because it is Wednesday night, and everybody's got stuff to get on with. But I don't want to slight the Lord either. So no. We'll just obey the Lord, and we'll do it fast. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 3. Absolutely, yes. 1 Corinthians 3, verses 1 through 3. Praise there God. There you go, Chief. And here we are. Thy brethren could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk, and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able, for you are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envy and strive for divisions, are ye not carnal, and walk as men. This isn't an, an attack on anybody here, okay? I'm attacking the person that said it. <laughs> just, just give it here the scripture. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Hebrews chapter 7 and verses 11 through 16. Hebrews, Hebrews 7, 11 through 16. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law. What further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? Now this is interesting. If you watch this closely, you can see what I'm talking about. If you just took this thing literal, I mean letter for letter, and ignored the spirit behind it, you missed a lot of stuff here. So what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? The priesthood being, for the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe, of which no man gave attendance at the altar. What he's saying is, this guy, this high priest we're talking about, didn't come from the lineage that the priest came from. Moses was told by God, it's the, it's the uh, uh, tribe of, um, yeah, now that I've said it, I've lost my train of thought. But the tribe, the Cohen's is what they would be today. But anyway, that tribe, and only that tribe, is where the priests come from. They have to trace their lineage all the way back through that tribe, okay? So, but he says, for the priests are being changed, there is made of necessity a change also in the law. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe, a different tribe than that one, of which no man gave attendance at the altar, of which nobody but that tribe offered offerings, worked the altar, did the ministry of the priest, right? If therefore perfection were by, excuse me, go on. 
Where did I, where did I stop? Keep going uh, on through 16.4. It is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spoke nothing concerning the priesthood. Judah wasn't included in those that would come to be priests, right? And it is yet far more evident for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest, who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. So if you, <laughs> praise the Lord. See, the search, the search for truth is like a treasure hunt. And uh, at least that's how I look at it. Amen. The more you search the unsearchable riches of Christ, the more you'll discover it's multi-layered. Because you could, if you just read the letter, you'd say, this guy, he's a, you know, he's a usurper. He's not from the tribe of Aaron. He didn't come from the tribe that Aaron came from, which is where the Aaronic priesthood comes from. He came from Judah, and there's nothing in the Scripture that says Judah is going to produce priests. It says, under the law, it says just the opposite, that they have to be in the Aaronic priesthood. Amen? Okay, so, we may not have the law of the carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. Look at Romans chapter 7, verse 6, and here's another little brief example of this. Romans chapter 7 and verse 6. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Praise the Lord. If a person is satisfied with the surface truth of the historical, grammatical, uh, literal fulfillment of Scripture, I'd agree with them. I wouldn't argue that because it's there, right? Those facts are here in the Scripture. However, truth is like an onion. The more you peel it back, the more you find is there. There's layer upon layer upon layer. Amen. The more you pull away, the more you find beneath it. Amen. John chapter 21 and verse 25. So if you just do a cursory reading, I don't like to argue with what's, what the Scripture says. I'm just saying there's a lot more there than just what's on the surface in the letter. There is a spirit behind this thing that wants to make it come alive to us. So it isn't just a, a history book or a, a grammar book. Amen. It's, it's, it's a history of Him. Praise the Lord. There are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written, everyone, I suppose that even the world itself, could not contain the books that should be written. So if everything was written that Jesus had said and done, it would fill every library, every book, and it would fill the earth. Is that not what he said? Right. All right? Based on that. So to be, for me personally, it's more than possible. I'd say it's probable that the miracles, the acts, and the words of Jesus recorded in Scripture may have been handpicked by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And the reason they were was to show us a deeper meaning if we could unravel the typologies which are all the revelation of Jesus Christ. Yes. It's not just, this is not this wasn't written for just a cursory reading. Right. This wasn't written like boy's life, you know, for, uh, <laughs> you know, for, for you older people. Uh, or, you know, the Archies or something. It, 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 it's not just for what's on the surface. For the hungry, for those that seek the Lord, He's found. Mm -hmm. The more you delve into it, the more revelation comes out. Amen? Amen. So, Hebrews chapter 4 Verses 12, 12 through 16. Hebrews 4, 12 through 16. See, we shouldn't be afraid to see something that we haven't seen before. I mean, we have the Holy Spirit. God's not going to let us, you know, run off into some kind of crazy stuff. If we have the Holy Spirit, He's going to lead us and guide us. Yeah. And if we deviate from the truth, He'll bump us back on path. How many of you ever got off into something and you thought maybe this is, you know, and then you realize, well, that ain't right. That's not right. It looked like it was for a moment, and then God has a way of just pulling you back in by the Spirit and opening up other 
things that you can see that contradict that particular thing. If it's scripture, it's gonna it's gonna confirm itself. Amen. Scripture will interpret itself. Amen. So for the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens. Remember, he's the one that came out of that tribe that wasn't supposed to be having any priest. Right. Into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are. Let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. Amen. So in the environment of grace and rest, you find a faithful high priest. A faithful high priest that lives inside of us. And you can enter in to another man's work through this priest. Amen. Amen. The finished work of Christ. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you unto the grace and unto, a, unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. According to Paul, the gospel is the preaching of grace. Mm -hmm. It's simple. It's amen. obvious. It's right before us. Amen? All right? The gospel means good news. Yes. Praise the Lord. And I guess it is. Grace is good news, hallelujah, for any of us that have struggled to try to do this stuff on our own and out of our own ability. Hebrews chapter 4 now, verse 2. <clears throat> for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Okay, he's talking about Old Testament. He's talking about the people, the, the Jewish people. Amen? He said the gospel was preached to them just as, it, as well as it was to us. But the word preached didn't profit them because they didn't exer exercise faith in the word. Amen? Right. So, when was the gospel preached to them? Now, here's where I'm, this is what I'm talking about. It wasn't preached the way we hear it preached. Right. But it was preached to them in a different way. But because they only saw what was on the surface, they never heard the gospel. Mm -hmm. they, heard, they heard words of the Lord, but it didn't free them. It didn't give them anything other than condemnation and shame and guilt and so on and so forth. And it didn't produce faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. Right. You can have all the facts and still miss God. That's right. Amen. So when, when was the gospel preached to them? In the types of the shadows. Just for example, during the wilderness journey. Amen? I heard you talking about that earlier. But listen to this. There's a lamb taken out of the lamb fold, out of the, out of the sheep fold, and it's sacrificed, and its blood is then applied to the doorposts. That's the gospel. Yes. The door. Yeah. Can I get an amen from somebody amen. Like Mike? Come Praise on. Lord. So when the Red Sea opened, and they went through the door. Praise the Lord. The scripture says they were buried in baptism. That's the gospel. When they yeah. went through the Red Sea, the gospel was being preached in action. Yes. Amen. When the rock was smitten in the wilderness and the water came out, the gospel was preached. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. When manna fell, Israel had food. Israel ate they fed on the true bread that came down from heaven. Christ. The gospel was preached. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. The serpent was lifted up on a pole and everyone that beheld it would heal or be healed. The gospel was being preached. Jesus was going to be crucified. Yes. He was going to be carried up and he was going to spoil principalities and powers. Yes. He affects the, the, the works of the enemy. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now Israel may not have understood, but every morning they ate manna. The gospel was being preached. Yes. Praise the Lord. Every time they drank water from the rock, the gospel was being preached. Yes. 
Joshua 24, verse 13. I'm saying, without preaching by the Spirit, you're just talking. Mm -hmm. Amen. It may be the words coming out of the Bible, but it's still just talk. Right. Hallelujah. And I have given you a land for which you did not labor, cities which you built not, and you dwell in them. I think we ought to get ready for houses we didn't build. I'm, t I'm, I'm no. saying that's what I think, that's where we're at. We ought no. to be believing Amen. We ought to be ready to start moving into houses we didn't build. We ought to start being ready for groceries we didn't buy. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Food that we didn't have to purchase or grow or anything else. If the vineyards and the olive yards which you planted not, do you eat? Uh -huh. You didn't plant them, but you're eating them. Uh -huh. You're getting the benefit of it. You didn't do anything to, 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 to be uh, uh, blessed that way. You just got the benefit of it. Amen. So then, because of that scripture and many, many others, but I'm just focused on that one for the moment, rest doesn't come by ignoring the works. Right. Praise the Lord. It comes by understanding how the work got finished. Uh-huh. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It, it isn't like we're not doing anything. We're believing. What we're, what we're believing in is how the work got finished. Yes. We're not trying to finish it. Right. Praise the Lord. See, the gospel shows you how the work got finished. Mm -hmm. That's what the gospel's about. Grace, hallelujah, yes. Yes. rest. Yes. Exodus 31, uh, verses 14 through 17. Exodus 31, 14 through 17. You'll keep, you shall keep the Sabbath, therefore. It's a holy, it's holy unto you. Every one that defileth it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. This is the gospel being preached here to them. Come on. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Come on. Praise the Lord. So the gospel brings us into a perpetual Sabbath. Just be, They had it, they read it, and they did what the Sabbath, they, they tried to do what they thought they were supposed to be doing on the Sabbath. Come on. But there is a deeper message uh -huh. that God is really trying to get across. Come on. And they didn't get it because they didn't get the gospel, even though the gospel was being preached to them. They were just seeing what was on the service. Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. So, I'm not going to break the Sabbath. I'm not going to dishonor or defile the Sabbath. And how am I not going to do that? I'm not going to do it by trying to do all that Jesus has already done. There you go. If I'm going to, the way I break the Sabbath is by me trying to do what Jesus already finished. Come on. I'm supposed to be resting, amen, and refreshed in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Yes. Praise the Lord. So the way I don't defile is by trusting, is by not trying to do something that's already been done for me. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking for a law that I can keep. Praise yep. the Lord. Yep. I'm looking for a life that can keep me. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Jesus is our Sabbath. Yes. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 2, verses 16 through 18. 16, 18. 16 through 18, frankly. Right? Okay. Colossians 2. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his carnal mind or his fleshly mind. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 14, 5 through 8. Romans 14, 5 through 8. One man esteemeth one day above another, another esteeming every day like, let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. 
He that regardeth the day, regardeth it unto the Lord. He that regardeth not the day to the Lord, he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not, and giveth God thanks. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. Whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. Praise the Lord. The Sabbath was made for us. Yes. Not us for the Sabbath. Jesus came for us. He didn't come for us to do Him. Right. He came to do us. Praise the Lord. Jesus came not to condemn, but to give us rest. Yes. To set us free. To bring us into His finished work. Mm -hmm. Luke chapter 4, 18 through 21. Praise the Lord. Last scripture. Luke 4, 18 through 21. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He had, this is Jesus' first public message. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. He closed the book and He gave it again to the minister and sat down, and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on Him, and He began to say to them, This day is the Scripture fulfilled yes. in your ears. Yes. Praise the Lord. So, what we should understand when Jesus preached this is that He wasn't preaching to drug dealers and prostitutes, murderers, and thieves. He was talking to people who had been in church all their life. Yes. <laughs> he was sent to broken-hearted people. People who had turned to what they thought was God and all they got was religion. Mm -hmm. He sent to the captives. People that were in bondage to religion. He came to remove the blindness and to heal the bruise. Amen. That's work-based religion and spiritual blindness. Mm -hmm. They were religious people. They were in church, man. Yes. That's who he came to preach to. Yep. Praise God. And the poor aren't just people who don't have money. Right. They're people who can't discern the Spirit of God. There it is. Spiritually poor. Yep. He came to preach Jubilee, the acceptable year of the Lord. Mm -hmm. The favor of our God. Mm -hmm. And we've been set free from slavery. So that we can possess our inheritance. Yes. Lord. And be restored to our rightful place. Glory. Rest in the finished work of Christ. There's far more than what we see by the naked eye in this, on the surface of the scripture. I'm not saying that's not true. I'm not saying it shouldn't be accepted. I'm saying you diminish the totality of God's greatness and glory by satisfying yourself with just history and grammar. And grammar. grammar. Sorry, Grandma. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yes. Are you with me? I had some dental work done today, so I'm having trouble. Got my tongue in front of my eye teeth, and I couldn't see what I was saying. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so here we are. It's God challenges us. To look at things by the Spirit. To look at things through the Spirit. If you look at Jesus, I mean, I, I just find that to be a really confusing statement. Because Jesus, everything Jesus preached, He preached it in a way that the people that were religious couldn't figure it out. He was preaching the Bible. But He was doing it in a way that went below or deeper than what they were used to. And so He'd have to come back and then explain everything. Right? Mm -hmm. He all his parables. They were biblical stories. They were stories that were based in biblical truth, but they didn't get them because they didn't see by the Spirit. Everything was natural. Everything was just that's what it says you got to do, you got to do it. Right? Right. But none of them could. It was, it's idiotic to think that somehow, after all this time, we are going to do something that nobody else has ever done before. And in fact, Something that the Scripture clearly tells us it's impossible for us to do. So what we need to do, what I believe God is trying to get us to understand, we need to relax and embrace 
everything that Jesus Christ has done. Celebrate it. Shout about it. Amen. And look for even deeper truths that pertain to life and godliness, but us, that pertain to us in the image of Christ. What God wants to do. I'm, I'm convinced that it's the only way we're ever going to see the, the fulfillment of Scripture. I didn't even go so far. I mean, I don't want, I'm, not, I'm not really preaching this, but look, here's what I'm saying. We, we look, we're looking at a kingdom to come. And what I'm saying is, based on what I understand, like Daniel 7 and uh, in Revelation, it's talking about a kingdom that came. Amen. It was written to the Hebrews. Daniel 7 was written to the Jews. Mm -hmm. He's talking about the end times. He's talking about the end of a covenant. Yes. He's not talking about the end of, 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 of humanity and the world as we know it. Because actually the word, when he says the end of, ends of the world or end of the world, that world is aeon and it's talking about age yep. or time. Yes. So he's actually talking about Daniel is prophesying future the end of the old covenant. Yes. That's what he's focused on. That's what he's alluding to over and over and over. Because then when you get to the, the Gospels, you hear him saying over and over, they're quoting stuff from back there, and they're saying, you know, uh, the end of the age is upon us. We are in the last days. When it says, and, and in the last days, you know, Peter stands up and says, this is that. Yes. This is what was prophesied. Yes. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The end of that covenant. The end of that age. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So there's there's so much here that we we just you know have a tendency to look at and say, well, that's what I've always believed, so that must be what it is. The only way you get revelation is by being open to it. There you go. And if you're afraid to make a mistake, <clears throat> you're in a body. You know what I'm saying? That earth suit has a big like bubble over your head that says mistakes happen here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, this is this is where mistakes take place. Hallelujah. But I'm we're above that. We can get past that by the spirit. Yes. The fact that God gave us his spirit is what uh, validates our our uh, spirituality, obviously, mm -hmm. and and uh, squashes or quelches the influence of the body on that spirit. Yes. The spirit, now the body is just here to give us legal access to do what God wants to do in this earth. Just like Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. So if we're not being radical, if we're not being out there, right, we're not really operating the way we're supposed to be operating. Jesus was out there. Mm -hmm. Not only just outside the box, they couldn't even find a box to get him. Come out on now. Put him into. I mean, he was just so far outside of what they had understood and believed. That when he comes along and starts preaching, he comes out. We've never heard anybody talk like this. Amen. What's, what's the deal there? That is the fullness of the Spirit speaking through a human being. Somebody who comprehends the truth of God's Word. Amen. Now, I'm not saying that's me. I'm just saying that's what the potential we all have. That's the potential we have, and that's what we should be striving for. We should be looking for those nuances. We should be looking for those new things that yes. God's wanting to do. Amen. 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 He's doing a new thing. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to think new in order to see it, aren't we? Right. We can't keep thinking old thoughts and see the new thing God's trying to do. Excuse me, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So, are you with me? Yep. Praise the Lord. We're doing alright. We're going to be okay. Praise God. We don't have all the answers, but He does. And Amen. we have Him. Amen. So we have access to all the answers, even though we may not have them all locked away in our little gray cells. They're there, and they can be pulled out by the Spirit. Glory. Amen. Amen. And the more we do that, the more influence we have in this world. Amen. Praise the Lord. The reason Jesus had the power and operated in that power is because He believed the power of God's Word. He lived it. He walked it out. He spoke it. See, I mean, we have to learn to say what this thing says if we're going to get what this thing offers. Exactly. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you for being patient. God bless you all for coming out tonight. And thank you most especially Jamie. I do not look at that old man. For a 
want to serve. I have to see one every time I look in the mirror. Nice to see a pretty young woman. Praise the Lord. Glory. Uh, 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 yeah, I know. I'm, I'm not pandering here. I'm just being nice. I'm being honest. Okay? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap. Praise God. Glory. Amen. God bless all of you. Appreciate you again being here. Have a good rest of the week, and hope we'll see you back here Sunday. In Jesus' name. We're the magnificent seven tonight, all seven of us. There you go. We're well, magnificent. We are. Magnificent. What? Magnificent. Six, <laughs> seven. Oh. oh, God. Praise the Lord. If you can't have fun, we're, we're in the wrong business. Praise the Lord. I'm like, for the preach out of the Bible. Yeah, and I come off. I thought it was him. I really did. I thought it was Sean. Good. Sean was all I know. Is that really interesting? It's quiet. And I dove down into the bunker itself, which is where I should have been in the first place, and uh, when I got down there, I still have to pick up.